Howdy guys and gals, I'm Kyle Broderick, and welcome to The Social Regressive. In a recent video, we took out this. It's a Stevens 200 in 308 Winchester. We wanted to shoot moving targets from 100 yards to 200 yards to 300 yards all the way back to 600. This was a lot of fun, great fun challenge. Make sure you check out the full video. I'm gonna link to it somewhere around here. And what we really wanted to do was test out the Boyd's At One stock and this scope up top here. This is the Falcon S8i. Uh, both of them turned out to be just wonderful for this challenge. Uh, the whole package overall is very light. It's perfectly balanced. It was just a wonderful shoot. We all had a blast. And one of the things that you might have noticed in there is that we had some problems with ejection with this rifle. This uses the typical uh, Savage style bolt. This is, you know, just swappable with any of the stuff you have out there, the 12 FVs, the 10s, whatever. So this uses that plunger style ejector. And a long time ago, what happened is I was uh, shooting some 7mm 08 in this thing. I had a, a different build going and I got into some overpressure situations and I ended up actually uh, kind of popping out the primer and blasting some gas back into the, the bolt. I actually etched the bolt face and more than that, um, you know, since that wasn't really a problem, the etched bolt face doesn't really damage anything in my case. Uh, what really happened is I annealed the, the steel that makes up the, uh, the, the spring behind the, the plunger type ejector. So when I would you know, pop these things out, a lot of time the round just kind of sits right here on top of the magazine and doesn't fall out, or it just kind of plops out the side. It's a very, very weak ejection. And fortunately, it is a really easy fix to get this thing back into fighting condition. So we're gonna take a close look at that. We're gonna swap out that spring just in case this happens to you guys too, or maybe just over time something wears out. Here's the offending part. This plunger should not be easy to press in. I can actually press this in with my fingernail without any worry that it's actually gonna break my fingernail in any way. This should be under a lot of tension, it's not. So what we need to do is get that thing out, and to do that, we have to back this pin out right here. So we're gonna drive through from the other side. There's a hole right here at the top of the, uh, the bolt head. It's the small one. And for my punch block today, I have uh, just a hole drilled in a piece of two by four. Works great. There we go. Now I need to be careful. Uh, I need to make sure that I am holding a finger or something over the ejector as I remove this pin punch because that's the only thing holding it from flying across the, oh no, actually the spring is so bad, it was in no danger of flying across the room anyway. So I should just be able to pull this out, all right? So there's the ejector. And then in here, should be a spring, but it's, it's kind of stuck in there. So I'm gonna get my very specialized tool, which is a bent paper clip, and I'll see if I can get this thing out. Can you tell which spring is the new one? All right, so this one is gonna go into the bolt face, and then it's gonna be followed by the ejector. The ejector has a groove right, uh, it's cut right in the side, and the pin is going to fit right in there to keep it from launching out of the gun every time you extract a case. This pin, okay, so this one has to go in first, and it has to align with the way that the pin goes right through the bolt. And then the pin is gonna follow up, and we're going to drive it in to this side using uh, the factory side. You can see that this shiny side of the pin is going to remain on the outside. It's gonna go in, and it needs to be very flush. We don't want it grinding against anything inside the action. And you might actually check your pin and see if maybe it's kind of uh, reworked on one side, if it has kind of a slope to it. You put the bottom end down here, top end down there. And it's a little bit tricky to get everything in place, so we're gonna switch over here to the vise so we can get the help of an extra tool. Here's my specialized tool. It's a ruined case chucked up in a vise. So what I'm gonna do is I lined up the ejector so that it's correct for the way that the pin should go in. 
And I'm gonna kind of hold this in place as I put it on top of the case. Get it, there we go, over the extractor. Now, the pin does need to go in that special way that I talked about. So I'm gonna check this for the flat side. There we go. Okay, and at the depth that it currently is, it's gonna hold on to uh, the, the ejector just fine. So I don't have to tap it in from this angle, I can break it off. So there we go, there's the ejector in place, and I just have to finish tapping in this pin. Final step, make sure that that pin is nice and flush down in there, and then run this into your rifle and make sure that nothing is catching. You shouldn't feel any binding, everything should be nice and smooth. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.